Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordant and we are back to continue our playthrough of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. So, we are just about to begin with the gameplay because the first episode was dedicated to character creation, talking about the lore of the first game, importing the character and all that. So we have our character here. He is a rogue multi-class with a ranger, subclasses being assassin and sharpshooter. And we also have our piggy companion. He grew up from the time of the events in Pillars 1 up to this point. He grew into an almighty boar animal companion. So we will keep accompanying us in this new journey. So let's check out my body. I'm guessing this is the soul going back to the body. Cool. We have our friend Eder. The return to your body feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even tokes from his pipe. At the first movement of your hmm. chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing and straining for breath. So, this is a result of choices you made in Pillars of Eternity. Oh, okay, so the only thing I can think of here is if it there had died, like a permadeath in Pillars of Eternity 1, he wouldn't show up here? I'm curious. No, there's no way. You're awake. What are you doing awake? Okay. How are you feeling? What? This is a result of choices you made in... Who are you? What do you mean? I know who he is. How is this a result of choices you made? I don't understand. I'm alive. Or is this a joke? I don't know. Lives a big improvement. Very weird. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Yes, yeah, so this this is the steward from Kednua. I guess they took part of the statue with us. The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Kadnua. <laughs> Kadnua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. Let me just check this. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I was 90% sure it was the son of Od Nua, but I just couldn't remember all that well. So Maros Nua was the son of Od Nua, an Ingwithan tyrant. Not much is known of Maros, but Od Nua became obsessed with restoring his son to life. He engineered the massive statue of Living Adra to house Maros's soul, but his plans were stopped by the concerted efforts of other Inwithan tyrants who saw him as a threat. Maros Nua's intended other body remained buried beneath the castle Ked Nua until Aeothus occupied it. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aeothus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. Okay, so the Deadfire Archipelago marks the eastern edge of the known world. So the first game takes place in Deerwood, this one takes place in the Deadfire Archipelago. Dominantly populated by island Omawa, who make up the tribes of the Juana, oops, the chain of hundreds of islands spans thousands of miles. The Deadfire contains myriad climates and biomes that are home to a bewildering array of creatures. The last century has brought ambition, ambitious colonial traders, explorers and pirates of the Deadfire, but travel east of the archipelago is blocked by the destructive storms of Ondra's Mortar. Legends among the Juana speak of an ancient cataclysm that devastated their people thousands of years ago. Details of this event have been lost to time, but Juana storytellers claim that it destroyed ne uh, everything they had built, sinking even the greatest of their cities beneath the waves. Okay. I know not how. But it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. I know. How could you know all that? You've been faking on us. 
He pokes at your shoulder with one finger. No, it's just because Bera told me. Misfortunes ruined topside with migrants fires the captain stirs. <laughs> An older man with ale sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. I love his voice. And Grim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. <laughs> now what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. I shall parley with them with my weapon. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. He indicates a nearby wardrobe. Okay. The word Ukaizo is scribbled and crossed out on many points of this globe. <clears throat> okay. There are weapons in the armoire here. Okay, cool. Alright, now make some use of it. Sure, ah, okay. So, tutorial, equipping items, uh huh, sure. And we have male armor, which has a lot of recovery time, not what I want. What is this? Berat's Black Bell. Combat only. Area of effect. Friendly target plus 5 radius from caster plus 5 radius from caster. What? Plus 5 radius from caster? <laughs> this is weird. Penetration 7. Friendly AoE restores HP. Foe AoE interrupt and 50 burn per 3 seconds for 9 seconds. This small bell of Ymiran still has no striker, yet it produces discordant chime when swung. This boon from Berath holds within it the power over life, death and undeath. Oh, maybe this is what we get for helping Berath in the first game. Because when I was testing PoE2, I just picked one of the default stories. And I think I usually picked Helia, and I didn't have this bell. Okay, then we have the Arquebus, which we want. And we also have a blunderbuss for the second weapon set. So we have two weapon sets unlocked to a maximum of four. Okay. We have quick items, which I guess I can put this here. And the male armor I'm not going to be using. The pirates of Deadfire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. Let's deal with them. Lost and alone in the storm. Oh, this part isn't voiced. Okay. A surly brutish looking captain stands stiff back before his crew. He scowls as he assesses you, his hair whipping about his ears in the wind. This is Benweth. Yeah, and I do enjoy the new graphics a lot. I'll be taking your ship now, if you don't mind. And especially if you do. No, you won't. Well, at least he asked. I am a gentleman of fortune. The captain shrugs in the sheeting rain before pinning you with a slow, murderous grin. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody and agonizing, sure. But at least it'll be quick. <laughs> Aim at the mouthy one. This is... this is... Um, this is Baldur's Gate 1, right here. When you meet the guys near the Veyorn's lair, and I think he, there's a line that says, you know what they say, always kill the mouthy one first. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go for something different here. I'm going to mount your skull in my cabin. You know, I always thought that room was missing something. <laughs> Dispositions. Oh, what is this? You have gained the reputation in a disposition. Dispositions represent how people perceive your personality throughout the world. Even seemingly nasty reputations will be favored by some people, and benign reputations sometimes bring out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad in Pillars of Eternity 2. Deadfire. To see icons for the effects of dialogue decisions on disposition, enable the Show Personality Reputation option in difficulty settings. Okay. I might do that. The captain tilts his head, staring impassively as the wind and rain whip at his scarred face. 
Even across the distance, you can make out the roughness of his, of his expression. Muscles in his jaw bulging. Is that supposed to provoke me? Nah. I won't be riled by the likes of you. Listen up, mates. He cracks his neck as he addresses his crew. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Uh-huh, you're just afraid. Play with the crew if you'd like. But don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. You had been with Whoa. Okay, so we're gonna fight, I think. We have Mr. Piggy. And how do I stealth? Left alt. Okay. Stealth detection. Recurrent cell to use. Oh, you can make noise to have somebody go the other way, and this is their detection range. Ah! When a character in Stelton does the reading radius or vision cone of a bystander, the bystander will start to detect them. The rate of detection is determined by the character's stealth skill and the level of the bystander, and it is faster in the vision cone than in the hearing radius. You can hover your cursor over any character while in stealth to see their hearing radius and vision cone. Some items, such as noisemakers, can be used to distract and move bystanders while you explore in stealth. That's very cool. That is very cool. Okay, so people are coming after me. And we have been removed from stealth. Combat introduction. Ooh, Lagofeth. Okay. Well, let's start killing. I cannot control it there. Ah, okay, so I have to... If I have both characters selected, I don't have my menu. But here I can pick. So I can turn on my model for aim shot, which I do want. I have the visage of Death's Herald. Once per rest, a target is frightened for 40 seconds. That's quite good. Use your watcher powers to gaze through your target's eyes deep into their soul, temporarily frightening them. And frightened here works in a different way than it did in Pillars 1. So this one lowers resolve by 5. It gives a penalty to power levels, which I have to go over uh, a little bit better. And it cannot use hostile abilities. Interesting. For now, let's just kill this bitch. And I guess we can start with a wounding shot? Okay. Decent damage, I guess. And the game is in very slow mode. This is... Okay, he's dead. This is regular speed. Yeah, piggy, go. Okay. Yeah, they're bugged out. Oh, he's fine. Okay, let's shoot someone else because this guy is near death. Okay, 31 damage with my shot, good. Okay, so everything is dead, because we also have our crew helping out. Let's work on those. Okay, the Piggy, move. I think Piggy was like stuck behind people. Okay. I missed. I think. And go for the final one. Near death. And dead. Storm's picking up. Take cover. Okay, I think we were successful in repelling the pirates. But something tells me that. <laughs> This will not be great. You have defeated the pirates, but you're not out of trouble yet. The storm picks up, lashing your ship and driving you dangerously close to a rocky shore. The Defiant's crew hurries to reduce sail and bat uh, sorry? Yes. To reduce sail and batten down the hatches. They work quickly, but the ship is still listing heavily. Just then a loose crate tumbles toward you, gathering speed on the rain slick deck. It misses you, but knocks Chitupek, one of your deckhands, off his feet. The Defiant heaves. 
She to pack pitches over the side. He grabs onto the rail, but his fingers are slipping. He cries out for help. Meanwhile, the runaway crate totters on the edge of the deck, ready to plunge overboard. You recognize the symbol on the front and realize it likely contains the salvage from Ked Nua, your key. I have no idea what that means. If there's a lot of very useful items in here, I, I doubt it, right? In any case, my character is a good character. I'm gonna rescue Shitupek. You grab Shitupek's arm just as his grip fails. For a tense moment, he hangs suspended over the roiling sea. Then, with a mighty tug, you pull him back onto the deck. You hear a heavy splash. The crate from Ked Nua is gone. But let's, let's hope <laughs> I don't regret this. Shitupek, meanwhile, nods in gratitude and hurries to his station. Meanwhile, the storm has nearly driven you ashore. A flash of lightning reveals a treacherous coastline and Aeotha striding into the distance. Nice butt. <laughs> the lookout barely has time to shout a warning before the Defiant runs aground. The impact hurls you from the deck and into a froth of waves, bodies and splintering debris. You struggle toward the beach just ahead, even as the surf tugs you toward the open sea. You kick and paddle with all your might until at last you feel sand beneath, between your fingers. Pulling yourself ashore, you collapse. So maybe it doesn't make a difference if we save Shitupek or the crate because the ship breaks, I don't know. Stranded, seek out a means of repairing your ship. To hunt a god, explore the island. a lot of sleep so far on this trip. I awoke you, but you look so peaceful with your face in the sand. <laughs> ah, so now this isn't narrated, okay. Eder runs his fingers through his hair and removes a strand of seaweed he finds lodged there. He examines it closely and then tosses it onto the sand. Something also very cool to see is when we're idle, we can just see Mr. Piggy, you know, doing his thing and sometimes he rolls over. With his belly up, which is very cool. <laughs> if you're worried about the ship, you can stop worrying. It's wrecked right over there. Thanks. He points out to Defiant, despite it being difficult to miss from your vantage point. So far, it's just you and me and the chair lady over there. The chair lady is probably the steward. If they're not stored something further up the beach. It's a relief to see you awake, my lord. I worried you were in for another long sleep. Your steward appears to be lodged between some rocks. Despite this, her tone is warmly cheerful. Where are we? Don't know, but it's real pretty. Difficult to say for certain. The dead fire is spotted with islands, some quite small. The good news is that if the storm hasn't spun us round entirely, I'd say we're in charted waters. I believe the Valian Trading Company operates in the region. Okay. Hence that little visit from that wretched pirate captain. Ah, okay, so wait, this might be relevant here. The Valian Trading Company, an outward-looking mercantile order from the Valian Republics. The 30,000 employees are tasked with delivering profit on the homeland's investment. In the dead fire, this means refining and exporting luminous Adra in enormous quantities. Oh, so people are using the Adra, okay. <laughs> Any help here, Berath? What do we do now? It is your decision, but Aethus still holds a piece of your soul. He was moving inland last I saw of him. I rather think he will have been hard to miss. Let's see about the other survivors. And somehow we gotta get the ship repaired. I don't want to be paddling out of here on a salvage raft. For now, I'd say your best bet is to find some sign of civilization. If nothing else, we may be able to hire on a shipwright. Hmm. My lord, if it is not too taxing, could you explain how it came to pass that you were returned to us? Ah, true, because I still haven't gotten the chance to do it. Um... Squint dramatically while looking out at the ocean. I've returned as the Herald of Berath. I'm on a special mission to find Aeothas and learn what his plans are. This is like, <laughs> very dramatic. So my soul passed into the beyond, and Berath gave me a choice. Find Aethas or die. These gods. 
You make one deal with them to stop a madman, and the next thing you know, they're threatening your soul. Okay, one thing I, I might have to do, and uh, you guys can also help out by leaving a comment, is I might have to lower the music volume because I think it gets a little bit too much in the way of the, the character voices. Piggy! He's rolling over. That isn't much of a choice, but castle or no castle, you are still my lord, and I will aid you to the best of my ability. Thank you. Well, I suppose we better get a move on. We can even send it there on his way. Uh, because you might want to play the game solo as well. Okay, yeah. Let's go. So, we get to choose single class or multi class as well for our companions. The choice cannot be changed later, so be aware of that. And you only get to pick between a few choices. You don't have the same liberty as you do when you're creating your own character. So, Eder can either be a fighter, a rogue, or a multi-class of both in a swashbuckler, fighter rogue. So, I think that given that this game is heavily themed in nautical um, adventures and pirates and stuff, I think a swashbuckler is a cool way to go. Um, initially, I thought it wouldn't be that great of a choice, because I usually like to play it there mainly as a tank, not that much as a, a roguish character. But there was something I saw in the ability tree that made me interested in the in the rogue, which is let me see if I can find it yeah, right here. This one, repost. The rogue looks for openings to counterattack in combat. Incoming melee attacks at target deflection and miss have a chance of allowing an instant full attack repost. Requires a melee weapon. So this is something that sounded cool back in Pillars 1, but since I'm playing a ranged rogue, I couldn't really use it. But I think it makes sense on a tank. Because my thought process is, and this should be fairly obvious for anyone, if your tank has a very high deflection, which he should, it means that a lot of attacks, or some attack I don't know, it depends on how Pillars 2 works, but I would expect a lot of attacks to miss, given the very high deflection of my tank, and for, if for every miss I can smash back with a full attack, that sounds awesome. So this alone is a reason for me to want to go into the rogue um, tree. Then there are some other things like you can escape to, as a mobility tool, you can hobble people, you can blind people. Um, there are some choices. But I think mostly this one should be the most interesting one out of them all. So, uh, with that uh, consideration, as well as the fact that the swashbuckler I think makes sense for this game, I'm gonna go with the swashbuckler. So here we have it, Mr. Eder. He also has the crippling strike and he also has knockdown. As for his proficiency, let's check this out. So he's metal folk, 16 might. 16, 11, 12, 10, 13. So much more balanced than our character. And this is honestly the way you should play this game. You you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't do something silly like this. Uh, with dumping constitution result. This is very suicidal. Um, only if you want to like meta game and really go for the high scores. I I'm doing it because I'm silly and I enjoy doing it like this. But I would suggest not going on such a, a low constitution resolve score. It there, for example, is, is a perfect kind of attribute spread. So he has athletics, explosives, mechanics, sleight of hand, stealth... Oh, he has one of each. And then he has bluff, streetwise and survival. I do think that these skills don't work in the same way they did in Pillars 1. These are mostly for uh, passive checks and dialogue options and stuff. So he has a piece of armor that grants him second chance, just like in the first game. He also has sneak attack, which is quite cool. Weapon proficiency. So he has a medium shield proficiency, which gives us block. Use your shield to attempt to block incoming weapon attacks, completely resisting the attack, if successful, at the cost of recovery time. The saber has the windmill slash. By swinging the saber with great arcing strikes, gain penetration at the cost of recovery time. And then haymaker if unarmed. Strike with heavy exhausting attacks that gain additional penetration at the cost of recovery time. Okay. Okay. 
So I think what makes sense, at least for the start, is to play with block enabled to try and mitigate as much damage as possible to it there. <gasps> we also have Cosmo. Nice. So this is the same pet we had at the start of Pillars 1. But they do work differently in Pillars 2. So in Pillars 1, they're just a, a, like a, a cosmetic companion to, you know, accompany you. But here they actually give a party-wide effect. So in this case, it will give plus one constitution for everybody in the party. So naturally, we want to have this on. And only the main character can have it. We also have the Defiant Apparel, or Apparel, 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 Apparel. <laughs> this grants Captain's Eye. While not flanked, the wearer has resistance to perception afflictions. Sounds good. Hand stitched by one of the finest hatters of Salona, the sharp lines of this hat suggest defiance against an uncaring sea. The Earl of Norwake gifted you the hat in recognition of the foresight, both natural and supernatural, for which you have gained a reputation in the Deerwood. You're not sure where the eye patch came from, but it reeks of rum. Okay. Awesome. And the male armor is probably worse than the one it there has. Yes, it is. He also has the wooden mayoral medallion. Grants him negotiator, plus one to bluff and diplomacy. He there chose not to return home to Gilded Vale. Still most comfortable living far from the cities, he settled in Deerford, which, like many towns in the Deerwood, was beginning the slow process of rebuilding. Believing now it was the obligation of Kith to be the leader, of, leader their gods had not been, Eder was soon named mayor of the town. Under his guidance, Deerford began to prosper. He expelled the last of the Skainites from the area and drew new settlers with the offer of land, a trick he had learned from someone he otherwise preferred to forget. With each passing day, Deerford would come to more closely resemble the Gilded Vale of Eder's childhood, the one worthy of its name. Upon his election, the local lord presented it there with this medallion as a sign of official recognition and goodwill. So this is basically the story at the end of Pillars of Eternity 1, the ending slides for it there, and apparently if you import the save, you get this, this medallion here. Quite cool. Oh yes. Hey. Okay. So many souls lost. So what do we have? Surely somewhere. Somebody dead. This is a wand. Let me just see something here. Unfit for melee. You get the def deflection penalty against melee weapons. And the type of damage is Pierce. Potion of minor healing and some gold. Let's go this way first, actually. We also have fast modes. A dagger. Oh, okay. She needs help. We have a rope and grappling hook and some lockpicks. Fire kelp. One, it's a, it's a food, I'm guessing. And water. Coily fruit. Okay. More dead people. They have a hat and leather armor. Spire sponge. Ingredients. You have found an ingredient. You can use to enchant unique weapons, armor and shields, as well as to craft food, scrolls, potions and other items. Okay. Selecting characters, this is just a, a normal tutorial and a quest journal, sure. The Defiant is looking far worse for wear after its unexpected landfall. The hull has splintered in several places along the keel, while the tethered sails stand as evidence of your battle with the pirates. The deck of the Defiant is well out of reach from here. The ship groans like a beached whale each time the waves roll in, but it doesn't seem to be listing further. You might, you might be able to climb it. So with athletics, we can scale the hull by hand, or we can also use the grappling hook. So I think it there has some athletics, or actually not really. He has one athletics. Let's see if it's enough. Oh, it's a watcher check only. Uh, well, let's see what happens. You find a gap in the planks along the bow of the ship, the ship and start to climb. You are halfway up by the time your arms start to tire. Eder makes it to the railing well ahead of you, pulling himself up and over the side. 
He turns then to help you the rest of the way, and the two of you find yourselves safely atop the deck of the Defiant. If the grieving mother were here, she would have fallen down and broken both legs and probably lost her uterus or something. <laughs> she was very unlucky in the first game. Okay, so I don't have any kind of penalty for failing that check. You're looking better, Casita. That or worse off than I thought. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking we're gonna get some expressions. Casita. A valiant term for captain. The sheen of sweat on her brow and the one cast on her features bellies Irena's casual greeting. It's my leg, Matiko. It hurts even worse than it looks. Have an expletive or curse. Okay. Irena's leg bears a bloody gouge along the length of her shin, and the swelling around her knee suggests a nasty break. I like this shadow over here from the clouds. What happened? I was a stubborn Postenaga. I was trying to fasten this mess down when we struck shore. Barrel rolled right over my leg. <laughs> Postenaga. Literally the valiant term for carrot, but conversationally meaning idiot. Okay. Everything we've been through and I'm nearly done in by a cask of rum. <laughs> Have you seen anyone else? Funny thing, it's hard to see much from the underside of the barrel. Fair point, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have a survival... Ah, okay. So, this is a survival check. And we get... I think... I don't know what this means. Does this mean that we need three? Or does it mean we need two? And then we have three in total. One from myself and then two from party assist. Okay. Or, might, I'll carry you back down. Okay, well, let's see if we can use the survival thingy. I wasn't planning on going for a run, Kazita. Irena watches you work with obvious relief. Once you're through, she gives the leg a tentative stretch. Ah, it still hurts, but I can manage from here. Agrasima. Agrasima, this is thanks, right? Yeah. Have you found any of the others yet? Not yet. I'll start a fire. If any of the others are out there, hopefully they'll see it and turn up. Okay. Okay, so I think we would get the same result if we just carry them down by using the might check. And climb down. Okay. So let's look over here. Hey! Okay, sorry. I, I got scared by the <laughs> by the enemy there. So we have a young boar, which is gonna be our first enemy. Sui sui. Okay. Well, I I kinda wanted to stealth, but I, I, I didn't have a chance, right? Yeah, I can't. So let's fight. Eder goes in front and try to knock him down. A good shot from my, my character here. Uh, since he's gonna be up close, I'm actually gonna swap to not have to wait the entire reload time. And honestly, I should have opened up with something like a wounding shot. I'm just gonna do something here. I'm gonna use a keybind, something I did not use in PoE 1 to facilitate this. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to wait the reload time, I'm going to swap for the blunderbuss and now I'm going to go for a wounding shot. Okay, he got knocked down and he's dead. Okay. Ah, also something that's very different from PoE 1 and that I still have to get used to, there is no health slash endurance. That, that doesn't exist. Uh, if, you, if you end the fight, with nearly no HP left, it's going to regenerate entirely for the next fight. You don't have to rest to recuperate your endurance. Which I guess makes some things easier. Wait, can I not customize this? Ah, I can. So I want a dead in the front. And then we can be like this. Or something like this should be probably better. We're going to swap back to our Archibus. And like we've seen before, the Assassin <clears throat> gets a bonus to damage and penetration when shooting from stealth. So we are going to make use of that right here. 
I want a wounding shot on the young boar. You can go for a knockdown and you can just go to flank. One of the cool things about the animal companion here is that they contribute for flanking. They also contribute for damage, naturally, but, you know. So we only grazed, which is very unfortunate. Okay, he got knocked down. We're gonna flank. He's flanked. Can I, can I see, like... Uh, I wanted to check the, the description, but I cannot. Okay, that's fine. Cool. I think the AI is turned off. Yeah, we're gonna get the AI to be on auto attack only. Just so they, they don't stop after they do the current command. They just keep attacking. Okay, so there's Irena. There's a soul here. Hope the rest of those sodden bastards made it. I'm guessing we can see the souls because of Berat's blessing? Maybe? Man, and our, our baby piggy is very translucent. You can barely see him. Okay. We have a crate. There must be other survivors out there. Yep. Okay. Let's keep searching. Hey, fancy seeing you here. <laughs> a dead sailor. The spirit's voice warps and shifts, muted as if by a great distance. Even so, he grins brightly at you. I can't see much of anything, really, apart from you. Just endless gray. What happened? Well, uh, the ship ran aground in the storm, and you died. Storm? That's strange. You'd think a man would recall a storm. It's like, it's like someone cut away a part of my memory. There's just this big black hole. I like that he, he's surprised by the storm, but not by the fact that he's dead. Weird. I thought death would be different. Big light and so on. But I don't see anything at all. Just you. Well, Brat charged me with guiding souls to the afterlife, so I suppose you're my responsibility now. Oh. Suppose that sounds nice enough. I'll follow you then, shall I? Come along then. The spirit falls into step behind you, radiating cheer. Okay. Suppose you're stuck with that. Yep. The board. Okay, so more boards here. Watcher. I can't hold them back. Let's try to do the same thing as before. We're gonna start with a wounding shot to give him a nice bit of damage as well as also giving him a damage over time. Very good damage. Awesome. And dead. Okay. Also something very cool that previously when I mentioned not wanting to wait for the reload, I kind of may have misled you. Because if you shoot from stealth, immediately after you unstealth, you get to shoot again without reloading. It, it was evident right here. I'm, I'm going to show it off uh, soon. But after that first shot after stealth, then you have to reload every single time. Leave it to me. Okay. Is this one of my? It is good to see you, well, oh, Watcher. I believe the boars were hoping for easy meat. Hitupek. Hitupek greets you with a relieved nod and checks the pistol at his hip. The bosun Beadil is in that cave over there. Ran in after a boar. Stubborn old dwarf. Dude, I can't even begin to understand how he pronounced this word because for me this is boatswain. I think he said like boatswain. Okay. So, why are you out here? I was able to calm one of the boars with a spell. Oh. For a time, at least. By the time I was through, I had lost sight of Beadil. I remained here, hoping he would return quickly. He has not. What happened? After we made landfall, you mean? I woke and Beadil was close by, swearing fit to bring Andra's wrath upon us a second time. We began to search for supplies. I came over this way in hopes of gathering some of that blood moss over there. I thought it might be of use. I imagine the boars had the same idea. Okay, I'll look for Beadle. I will make for the campfire. I must get this pistol cleaned if it's going to be of any use. Be careful in there, Captain. Okay. And I love Mr. Piggy. 
I feel sad that I'm killing boars, but the game gives me the choice. <laughs> that is so. There's nothing for miles. There's nothing for miles. Okay. So there's a cave over there with the rainbow. Cool, very cool. Let's speed this up. Oh, we have more people here. Spy, Magran here. My flame burns yet. <laughs> Is that you? That me. Eld, Eld Ingrim appears to be in sound condition, though his wax jacket is soaked through. He appraises you with bleary-eyed amusement. You woke just in time for the fun. Fighting off motherless raiders one moment, flung into the freezing depths of Ondra's bosom the next. <laughs> Ingrim's eye twitches as he flashes a smile, notable for its extraordinary absence of teeth. Aye. Magran learns us poor bastards that a little excitement's good for the heart. So let's check out Magran. Goddess of war, fire, transformation, purification, consumption and trials. Patron goddess of the Deerwood. Thought to have blessed the god hammer bomb that destroyed Wildwin and possibly Aethas. Yeah, so this is a, a, a choice because he's talking about Magran. And we have this choice here. The last Magranite to travel with me almost went mad because of his goddess's trials. This was Durance. Aye, but almost mad ain't fully mad. Ah, old Durance. The <laughs> goddess shan't forge another like him in our lives, Captain. Can we go back on the ship now? So this is Vela. <clears throat> and who is Vela? Vela rocks back on the heels of her feet watching you both. It doesn't say here, but um, if I'm getting this right, and I hope I am, I mentioned back in Pillars of Eternity 1, there was a quest that you got to kidnap a baby Orlan from its crib. And the, the goal of that quest was to deliver that baby to be sacrificed for some evil doings, but naturally, our character is benevolent, I would never sacrifice a child. However, if you pick up the child, you actually get a physical item in your inventory, which is the baby. And if you don't give her up for the sacrifice, the baby stays with you the entire game. <laughs> and what happens is, if you kept the baby in your inventory while coming to Pills of Eternity 2, then you have a grown-up well, not that grown up, but not a baby anymore, Orlan Lady. Um, Vela, don't let Engrim be bad influence while I'm gone. That's unkind. You're the yeah. one decided to pluck this wean from the wilds of Air Glanforth. Blame that stone steward of yours for bringing the furry maid along. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the wean, the tiny, the, the wee wean from the wilds of Air Glanforth. No slight to your kind, of course, Captain. Yeah, because I'm an Orlan. He chuckles and nods in your direction. I'm also going to read about the Orlans. Orlans are the smallest of the kith races. That's my race and that's Velas' race as well. Uh, though many cultures don't consider them to be civilized at all. Also notable for their large ears, two-toned skin and hirshut bodies, Orlans are commonly found in Erglan Fath, the Ixamital Plains and parts of the Deerwood. They are known for their mental intensity and sharp senses. Uncle Engram, you promised me ale. Why the hell are you drinking ale, child? Later, sweetie. Uncle Engram's thirsty too. <laughs> he absent-mindedly taps on his chest near his heart, sounding the thunk of something metal beneath the priest's jacket. I love it. But yeah, that's, that's what happens if you take the baby along with you in Pills of Eternity 1. And I think, and I hope, there are still more interactions with um, with her in that regard throughout the game. Okay, so let's explore this sea cave, which is where uh, Iodul, I think is the name of the guy, went. So what do we have here? Tutorial in stealth abilities and stuff. I guess we the first to head this way. Okay. We picked up ammunition, which I don't think is for us, by the way. Oh. 
Okay, so we're moving stealthily because there's a cave beetle right there. Trouble up ahead. Okay, this is as far as I can go without being detected. And there's actually two of them. So if if I'm interpreting this right, I think what this means is we have a 98% chance to hit. And the the armor rating of this enemy is 6 and we can penetrate 100% of that armor so we deal 100% damage this is how i'm interpreting this right here yeah because the archibus is a penetration of 9 i'm hitting from stealth which means i should even get more penetration okay so let's uh, should I actually start with the crippling strike and just leave him hobbled? Nah, let's let's go for damage here. Suffer. So damage, knock him down, and Mr. Piggy will help out. Okay, not a lot of damage. So let's see now. We shot from stealth, so now I should be able to get a, a second shot without reloading. Yeah, there we go. But now, the next shots, I will need to reload. Is he going for my rogue? Grab him. Okay, yeah, he was. So let's try and knock this down as well. And let's go, actually, and, and flank. Okay, good. And I want another wounding shot on this one. Oh, come on, you gotta hit, man. Knock him down. Okay, that's a good shot. And now for the final guy, let's flank him. And blam. Okay, cool. So when we do hit, we hit hard. Which is what I want. Okay, what else do we have? We have a skeleton. Is there something over here? Ooh. Also a skeleton. With more skeleton friends. Hmm. Can I investigate these enemies or is it impossible? Okay, I don't think I can investigate them outside of combat. I know he patrols over here, so I think I'm gonna wait for him to come over here while his friends are far away and fight him like that although they're all coming in now do I have a blunt weapon? I do not have a blunt weapon, okay so you guys go away, shoo, shoo shoo okay, now this guy is alone no 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 trouble up ahead I want to try and pick him up alone, if I can. Can I shoot from here? Let's see. Actually, let's save the game in case this is very hard. <laughs> okay, so shoot. We're gonna have a choke point here. Let's slow down the game. Oh! Damn, that's what I want. That's what we want. Perfect. Perfect! So go over there. We are going to... Wow. How much armor do these guys have? Oh, they have 12 armor against piercing. Yeah, so I killed that one because of the... Um, I'm guessing the advantage in penetration. Oh no, he only had 6 armor. What? Maybe that... Oh, Cave Beetle, sorry. Uh, not that one. It's a skeleton. Yeah, 13 penetration versus 12 armor. Yeah. Th that's because of the bonus penetration from the Ranger Sharpshooter as well as the Rogue in Stealth. Okay, good to know. So go there, go there, shoot him. Yeah, no penetration, which sucks. Ugh, just gotta keep going like this. Piggy, can you go over there? You're taking a lot of damage, dude. 
don't like that. Okay, so he has the fight and recovery, which means he gets to heal a bit. But I would like him to heal a little bit more. Okay, if I can kill this guy fast, we shouldn't have a problem. Okay, he's fully healed. Good job there. So go over there. Okay, good. Now he can flank and shoot. Perfect. We can accelerate this combat. A nice hit from it there. Lovely. Perfect. Let me also check. I think it there should be hitting. Um, where is this? Engaged. Hold shift for more information. So his armor is reduced because he is flanked. Then we have the accuracy. Ah, there you go. Damage. So. 18% more from Might, 10% from Sharp, which is a Saber uh, ability. Yeah, we have there. Sneak Attack and Over Penetration. Awesome. So that, that's why it there Sorry, dealt so much damage there. And now we actually have a Blunt Weapon, which is what I want. Good. An eye out. And we can continue exploring this area here. I don't want to go up there yet. Let me see. We picked up... A pistol, which I th think nah, I'm gonna leave that one. Although this is 19 to 24 damage versus 4 to 7, I think I'm gonna use the pistol as a side weapon right now because the penetration is not that great. And this one has 6 penetration while this one has 7. So it should be better against these enemies here. Then we also have the Warhammer. Which, if we compare to the Saber, deals less damage, has more penetration, but then the Saber also has the sharp effect. So I think the Saber right now is better, even against the Skeletons. Okay, so let's go over here. Take off fast mode. I'm guessing this guy is not alone. Okay, so wounding shot. Did not kill him straight up, which is unfortunate. Good job. Okay, back up because there's ooh, there's people coming. There's a rot ghast. Immune to poison, immune to disease. Eight armor. Okay, so I have to. Oh, yeah, they do have less armor against um, blunt weapons. Though this one has less armor against slashing, so I think that's better. Let's back up here. I don't want to... Uh, Piggy? Piggy? Why is Piggy stopped? Piggy? Well, I shot the Revenant. Uh, yeah, you can actually stick with the Revenant there. Let's hobble him. Let's see if I can make this a choke point here and knock him down. I don't know why the pig is not moving. I don't understand it. Hey. He took 52 damage from a disengage attack? It was a crit, I guess. Okay, there's a lot of people on top of it there. I think my pig is bugged. Now he's moving. I don't understand it. Okay. Well, we're beating on the Revenant. Not even close. This Rotgast is going for Mr. Piggy, I think. Okay, that one's dead. Let's start focusing on the weaker ones. No, Mr. Piggy. Awesome job, Mr. Piggy. Okay, so I think Mr. Piggy is engaged by the Rodgas, so I don't really get the luxury of trying to move away with him. Let's bleed him. 
Let's maybe work on this guy. Well, Mr. Piggy is most likely gonna die, but... He will rise again, don't you worry, my friends. Okay, good, that's what I wanted. Come over here. Crippling strike. Another wounding shot. Mr. Piggy lives. Oh! Okay, he's focusing on it there, which is good for me. Awesome, awesome, he's missing. Keep at it. Go for the crippling strike. He has a lot of HP though. Ooh. I like that. We're fine, we're fine. Awesome! Swap for the pistol for some quick shots. Is he gonna explode? Oh, he does explode. We all lived. My friends, this is super tactical combat right here. <laughs> also, something very cool in this game, you can dual wield pistols. It's quite nice. Uh, but it, it comes at the penalty. I, I'll show it in a second. So... Okay, so let's interpret this. Interpret this. My mechanics is one, which is insufficient for the lock difficulty, which is two. But we get a party assist from it there that allows us to overcome the difficulty. Okay. All right, but I'm keeping what's in there. Oh, lockpick cost. It, it would cost me a lockpick. All right. Yes. Pick the lock. Well done. Well Unlocked. Valiant frock coat, minor healing and some gold. Of course. Let me actually do something here in case it gets it's necessary. Uh, I'm gonna take this one, just in case we need healing. Now, naturally, I'm not playing on trial of iron mode, but I'm gonna play as if I were. I like to avoid deaths as much as possible. Spark crack. Oh, he also has a, a war bow. Okay. If successful, distracted for 16 seconds. Distracted means minus 5 perception and flanked. Okay. I guess you can take it. And you also have a stun bomb. Now, I think these... <laughs> I think these things are affected by my skills. On explosives. Improves the accuracy, damage and effectiveness of bombs, noisemakers and similar devices. Oh, I don't even have any. Okay, so he's a better choice than me. All right, all right. Okay. What is it? I'll take care of it. So this fight can actually be kind of dangerous. I'm very happy that Mr. Piggy survives. I, I didn't think he was going to survive. But this guy... Being an idiot, he swapped over to it there. What else do we have? A table. Whoa! Okay, by the way, I'm, I'm curious about something here. Why am I not getting... It seems like this is not working. Because I, I'm pausing manually there when I saw them. Okay, so we cleared out this section, we cleared out this section. We still have this area and this area to check. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave my characters here. Yeah. I'm going to swap back to my Arquebus. Yeah. And I can also have it there on his Warbow to pull enemies from afar. Yeah. And this is going to be the point where we save our game. This is going to be save number one. Okay, did it work? It worked. Okay, so yeah, we're going to end this episode here. In the next one, I intend to explore the rest of this cave and then just keep on moving with the story. Our current quests, as we had seen, are helping hands. We are searching for the dwarf in this cave. Then we also have stranded, which is to seek out a means of repairing our ship. And then we have to hunt a god. I think these are the main quests, or the main story quests, and these are just normal quests. 
Um, but yeah, so as always, my friends, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching some PoE2 Deadfire. I hope you guys are liking this start with Tiny Mustache Man, Eder, and Mr. Piggy. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you enjoy the content, consider subscribing for more. There are videos coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.